uh, Eric, we're in the kind of the very beginning set of our greatest biography series. Uh, last week we talked about Corey Tim Boom, which she's quite the uh, that was quite the book. And the fact that it was at the bottom of the list was no, we're still smarting over that one, aren't we? Uh, yeah, um, I'm, that's well. a great book for a seventh, uh, <laughs> you know, book in in a, in our list. That's that was a pretty extraordinary book. But we do have some great ones. That's true. Uh, you know, up ahead as, as well as some today. that didn't make the list. <laughs> yeah, a lot that didn't make the list. Yeah, uh, I'm actually surprised that this one isn't higher up. I mean, I was surprised about hiding place as well, but. Uh, this book has been so, at least in the LRZ world, we talk about this book all the time. And it's a CT stud story, The uh, Cricketeer and Pioneer by Norman Grubb. Do you want to, do you want to even give a cursory overview of CT stud? Yeah. I, it, it, that's a hard one, Stephen. CT stud. I didn't know about CT stud when I was first becoming a believer and sort of walking in the faith out and there were certain heroes that I was developing, you know, the Hudson Taylor, the George Mueller. And I, I was trying to wrap my mind around what it meant to be a man of God. And I think everything began to gel together at a whole nother level. And if you were to watch the trajectory of Eric, Eric's life and my development in and through that time, you're going to see some, some, a firmness, a resolve, and even a strength begin to emerge. And that's right about the time I'm, I'm running into C.T. Studd. And he just, he gelled something for me and his life showed something, which if I was going to give a quick description, it's manliness meets godliness, as opposed to godliness replacing manliness. And I think we have grown up in a generation where godliness replaces manliness. Right. And you sort of have to get rid of the manliness because that's opposite of God. When in actuality, Jesus was manliness meets godliness. And it was important for me to sort of begin to wrap my mind around because manhood isn't a uh, an avant-garde thing these days. It's not in vogue. It's not popular. It is sort of one of those things to be sheepishly embarrassed about. And we at Ellerslie have decided we're not going to do that. And we're going to celebrate the fact that God has built us as men. And we want to be fully men. What does that mean? And I think C.T. Studd becomes a great picture for that of a man who is 100% focused on Jesus, a man who is 100%, if there's enough percentage for all this, to be focused outward on the agenda of Christ in a generation and is willing to be forgotten himself, to pour out his life, to say, I was given this strength so that I can give it to others. The story of C.T. Studd is extraordinary to the point where it's like awe-inspiring because it is so extreme that we don't really have a gauge for it. You know, the typical gauge goes up to a hundred, right? And then CT stud busts through the gauge and goes up to a thousand. His commitment to Christ is outrageous. It is, I don't know if, that's a, <laughs> if there's a better word for it, but he's one of the wealthiest men in all of England. He is one of the most famous men. He's an athlete. He'd be the LeBron James of his generation as a cricket player. He was literally one of the top athletes in the world. He had the fame, he had the position, he had the power, he had the influence, and he runs smack into Jesus Christ. What is he going to do? And that's the storyline. It's right. what he does as a result of encountering Jesus, weighing the pleasures of the world and the kingdom to come. What is more valuable? And his decision is going to strike all of us dumb. I mean, that's what it does. We're like, whoa, he did that? He did that. And it is so convicting to see that he gave up everything and relinquished everything for the sake of the gospel. Yeah. Uh, what would you say is the greatest impact for you? I mean, there's there are so many great things in his life. In other words, the mm -hmm. fact that he okay, he was a great athlete, that's amazing. And when Hudson Taylor gives, when he comes to Christ and Hudson Taylor gives him that commission of like, okay, there's a need of this world for the gospel. Mm -hmm. You know, he goes to China and India and then eventually spends most of his missions time in Africa. I mean, he changes the face of missions. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And there are so many pithy moments of his life. What, what would you, if you were to look at his life, what would you say, okay, here is an impacting reality of, of yeah. the book or his life? Yeah, if I could, you know, sort of slip in the manliness meets godliness, you know, the combo package and even his name, CT, Charles Thomas Studd. Charles means manly. So his name means Manly Stud. <laughs> and I got Which, stuck with Eric Ludi. I was going to say, you mentioned several times how, how much you would love to have oh, his name. Could you imagine what I could do with a name like that? It's no wonder he lived such a great life. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, think, I think it was uh, Shakespeare who said, a rose by any other name 
you know, is still yeah. a rose. So uh, I don't, I don't think you can claim the name thing, by the way. Oh, okay. Uh, so I would say if I was going to pick one dynamic of his life that greatly impacted me, I think it's his, you could call it audacity. I'm not sure if that's the right word for it. His, his fearlessness, his, I, I want to say manliness because that's what it is, but it is his gumption to do for Christ. It's just like, no, I'm ready to do it. If Jesus gave everything for me, then let's get this game going. Hey, I'm all in. And he just moves past all of the normal barriers and the cones that we said, no, there's some, some cones there. You're not supposed to pass that point. And he goes right through it. And he risks everything for Jesus, knowing full well that Jesus will preserve him, provide for him, care for him. And if his time, it's his time to go, he's going home. And I tell you what, it's just like, that's Christianity. It's all you can say back is like, okay, that's what it looks like in the modern era. Yeah. Uh, for me, it's, it, I, I just have to, amen. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that aggressive Christianity, uh, that's probably, it probably won't translate well in this modern culture, but his willingness to, to lay everything down and risk life and limb for the sake of the gospel. I mean, there's a whole season of his life that he and his wife, in order to save money, I mean, after they gave away all their money, uh, we're sleeping on a bed full of scorpions. What was, what was I in like years? And it's like, buddy, just get a new bed. And yet he was so focused on the gospel. And one of his, one of his books that he wrote, I, I love, I love his writings. He, he is so pithy. Uh, and he just, he does not, he, he doesn't re, uh, how do I say this? He, he packs a punch. Uh, yeah. every statement doesn't is, mince words. Yeah. That, I mean, it's just, it's painful to read because it just kicks you in the teeth and you're like, all right, I don't know. I don't know what I'm living in my American version of Christianity, but he, he grabbed a hold of something. And every, every time I come across him or his writing, it is so inspirational to say, okay, Nathan, how, how am I living the reality of the Christian life? And I, and I would say in our generation, if you were to compare us to modern American Christianity, all right, we're doing good. Uh, you know, Ellerslie's a great, picture of something. And yet when you look at a guy like CT stud, it is, we are almost so paltry compared yeah. to the reality of what it could be. Yeah. It's like, it's like when DL Moody uh, heard that quote by Henry Varley uh, in England and you know, Varley said, the world has yet to see what God can do with a man fully yielded to him. And, you know, of course, DL Moody heard that and he's like, well, by God's grace, I aim to be that man. Uh, I read a story like CT stud, DL Moody did a great job, but I read CT study and I'm like, all right, I don't, I don't know how much further you could go. You know, it's like Elisha coming to Elijah saying, I want double. Yeah. And if God says, Nathan, you know, like, you know, what would you want from CT Stead's life? I'm like, I want double. <laughs> I don't even know if that's possible. I mean, it's just, yeah. it is so audacious, yeah. but that's actually the thing I love about CT Stead where he is willing to risk everything. Uh, anyway, so one of the books that he wrote was called Chocolate Soldier and just talking about this idea that true Christians do not fear. True Christians run into the heat of battle. Uh, one of his quotes, you know, that we love is, you know, if someone says that there's a lion along the path, you know, most Christians of our modern day would probably like, okay, I'm not going. There's a lion. And he's like, what? One lion? You need like two or three lions and a couple of bears. And then I might consider even going like, that's not even hard <laughs> enough for me to go. Whatever that attitude is, that yeah. is so inspirational to me yeah. uh, to realize that if we had a bunch of CT studs living in this world today, People who are just fully yielded to Jesus Christ and all in on for the sake of the gospel, we we would turn the world upside down, yeah. uh, which is just amazing. So let's talk about traits, character traits of this man that most stood out. I, I have a go-to one, but I want to add something because what you just said triggered a thought that I think is very, very important for understanding C.T. Studd. He is very serious about serving Jesus, but he was one of the funniest guys in his entire generation. This guy could laugh maybe better than anyone else in his, in his generation. And that's a key quality that I think gets lost when you think of someone who's all in for Jesus. You think of some somber, straight-faced <laughs> right. character, when in actuality, the happiest people on earth are technically the ones that have given Jesus full reign of their life, because our God loves to laugh. And C.T. Studd loved to laugh, and he'll make you laugh. When you read his writings, they're so serious, they'll hit you between the teeth and be sort of laughing as they're doing it. <laughs> but that's a quality mixed with, so here's my quality that I did pick, and that is his, his givenness that he looks at it very logically. Jesus Christ gave everything. So here's my everything. 
And that is, it's an, he truly gives everything. I have so much less to give than he had. He had athletic ability coming out the wazoo and he had finances and position and talent and all of that. And he gave it all up for Jesus. And I'm, I find myself holding on to little things and it's just like, it's such a huge picture. It's not just a small one. It's a huge picture of what it means to give to Jesus, what he is deserving. Amen. My favorite characteristic about stud is his, he was a celebrity mm-hmm. and yet he was willing to lay down the celebrity ism. If you want to say it that way and become what he called an et cetera. Uh, our culture, one of the things I've just been almost grieved, grieved about is we are so desirous for, to be a celebrity, to be, to be known, to have our, you know, our name in the lights and, you know, to have our YouTube channels and our social media to, you know, go crazy. And yet when you look at the reality of Christ, it's actually a willingness to make myself unknown so that Christ could be known. Mm -hmm. And what you see in CT stud is he had the fame, he had the wealth, and yet he was willing to set aside the celebrity aspect of all that he could have been and, and could have leveraged for the sake of the gospel, you know, and yet he said, okay, I'm actually willing to lay that down and become a nobody. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and, and one of my favorite stories is, you know, he's, he's on his deathbed because of all these diseases that he had from China and India. And, you know, he hears the call of interior Africa that there are lost souls. And he's just like, someone has to go and I'm going to go, which is irrational. And no mission society wanted to, you know, to he take him on. He couldn't pass the physical exam. <laughs> you know, which is, I mean, I would, and he's older, you know, yeah. I think he's what, his fifties or so. Well, well okay, older. Let's he was so older. young. He, yeah, was, he was so, very young. so young. <laughs> <clears throat> that is uh, so weird to think that, I, <laughs> that I'm about that age. Oh, That's I, horrible. I, I, yes. Uh, our, both of our birthdays are coming up and I'm, yeah, we yes. Get, anyway. One more tick. Oh, uh, praise the Lord. <laughs> uh, but anyway, he's, he's getting older. Is that, is that better? That's better. He's on his deathbed. And yet he's just like, even if no mission society will send me, I have a God who will send me. Yeah. And it's just that attitude. And he's just like, I, I don't care about being known. And he, you know, he created what he called the society of the et cetera's and the et cetera's it's like when you have a list of something, it, the et cetera's is all the stuff that's not mentioned in the list. And it's yeah. like, let's do colors, red, yellow, green, orange, blue, uh, et cetera. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of other colors, but we don't, they're not even good enough to be mentioned in the list. And I love Stud's perspective of even if nobody knows me, even if you know I go on the mission field and die, even if I, I'm never mentioned in a list, God is worth it. And, and I just love that that willingness to not be the celebrity, to lay it all down, and yet all for the sake of Jesus Christ. I think it's Amen. such a beautiful thing that we in this generation desperately, desperately need Amen. because we're almost the opposite. Amen. And here we he made it in the list. Number six uh, in his biography. Just think about that. What a what a twist to your storyline. That is true. Uh, <laughs> those will be first, will be last, and last first, I guess. Uh, I I really do love CT Stud, and I know yeah. that he's had a huge impact on us and, and on Ellerslie. Yeah. And if again, I think I'm going to probably say this with every book. But if you've not read this book, it needs to be on your list. If you don't say this with every book, then something's wrong with our list. <laughs> That's true. That's true. You need to be reading these books. Now, is is there an audiobook of this one? Because I don't. I've never listened to this one in audiobook. Yeah. So they. They. This is the old cover. In yeah. fact, most of the books I think we have. <laughs> this is probably the old covers, uh, which we'll put a, dis- a link in the description. You know, in case you want to uh, to order it and then actually help Daily Thunder too. Uh, but they just came out this this year with an audiobook, oh, uh, okay. which is really exciting. I, I've not listened to it. I don't know how good the the voice is because you know some. You're very. Finicky. I'm very finicky. Yeah. Yes, I, I love audiobooks, but there's certain voices that just have a hard time listening to, uh, probably my own. Um, so thank you for listening to daily thunder. <laughs> um, but yeah, so there is now an audiobook, and I'll put a link for that down there uh, in the description as well, but we, we really love stud. We love his writings. Uh, in fact, we, we republished chocolate soldier, uh, right. Ellerslie, uh yeah. just cause we just love him and his writing. So, yeah, well, we're excited for, uh, number six and uh, these five more books That's that are right. coming Aren't up you excited so, for number five. I, uh, I am, which is, in my mind, a very close tie in it the is. sense of like, there's, there's a lot get, of similarities. No, you're giving still, something away. Oh, our audience is too discerning. You can't give any, you know, don't give any bread trails. We have to make it a surprise. All right. Well, until next time, <laughs> when there'll be a surprise book at slot number five, uh, God's blessings. We're excited.